Hey everyone, Curse Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted, and here we have Aura Skyclave Hierophant. This deck comes to us from Dully, who says, The deck feels like it falls apart more often than not. Assembling the combos or ideal board state to go off with the deck feels more missed than hit. Please help. And they say the budget for the deck is $100 or less. I think we can definitely work within that, and uh, as uh, viewers know, I have a soft spot for Aristocrats deck, uh, and I have a soft spot for white-black decks. So right up my alley, this will be a nice and easy episode, and we'll see what we can do to improve the deck. Before we get into it, if you'd like to send me your deck so I can work on it, there is a link in the video description below to the form you can fill out to send my way. And if you'd like your deck to be the next deck I make a video on, well, there's a link over there too where you can bring your deck to the front of the queue. Finally, if you'd like to take a look at the deck list in this video yourself, the deck list will be linked down there as well. I highly recommend you take a look. This is, I would say, a pretty good cleric deck. Um, I don't have a lot of problems with it. I have a few adjustments to make, but the deck itself is very functional especially with a hundred dollar budget. Please, if you have comments in mind, be mindful of the hundred dollar budget of the deck. We cannot just put infinite money into it. All right, Aura, Skyclave Hierophant. Who are they and what do they have to do with, let's say, Cleric Aristocrats? Well, he's a four mana, three, three core cleric in white and black. Lifelink and says, whenever Aura, Skyclave, Hierophant, or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. And he's got a pretty, you know, uh, dark sounding flavor text alongside with that. So what's our main plan? Well, when Aura comes out, uh, while he's on the battlefield, as our clerics die, including him, thankfully, we get to reanimate smaller clerics from the battlefield, creating a bit uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield, which creates a bit of a chain that allows us to either a at least get values for a value from our creatures dying and getting another creature back, or b, uh, which I think is a lot better, in order to kind of amplify the number of sacrifice targets or the number of sacrifices we have in general. And so let's take a look at the deck itself and see what, I'm just gonna make a note of a card I'd like to suggest. And uh, let's see what we can do here. The deck itself looks pretty good. We have 34 lands. I think I wouldn't mind going to like 35 at least without the MDFCs. We have quite a few mana rocks, which I do like. And coming down here, our curve is really, really nice. I, I do really appreciate a curve that kind of curves out like this, where, you know, four drops, which is our commander, is kind of low, so we only have a few cards to take a look at. Uh, we have a few five and six drop uh, angel, angels, my goodness, uh, clerics, and uh, rounding up at six uh, so that we have a nice chain of creatures we can go backwards through. Now, we have only two one-mana clerics, and I think we're kind of limited in our options here. If we go over here and we'll type in cleric, and let's see what our one-drops are in white and black. And I don't think we're going to have... Oh, we have a lot more than I thought. Okay, I think we could probably benefit, though I didn't put any of these. Oh! Oh my goodness, yes, this, this needs to be in the deck. Okay, I didn't think of that. And that, sorry, I'm very familiar with these cards, so I'm gonna grab them and then they'll be on the suggestion list, uh, though I will have to take note of what the cost is. So Archfiend's Vessel is 12 cents, so I think this would be a really nice inclusion. Actually, let's not go into inclusions yet. I'm just gonna leave them up there and we'll go back through them after we look through the deck. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So the deck generally works uh, as expected. Uh, it's full of clerics. I think almost every creature is a cleric, which is nice, but we might be taking a bit off of the, like we're gonna 
take a break from that because even in tribal decks, sometimes you want to play non-tribal cards when they really they work really well with our theming or our uh, deck plan. So let's take a look at a few cards that stick out to me that I think aren't ideal. Uh, Rescue from the Underworld sticks out as being a very expensive reanimate two creatures card. I think we can do better. You already have Victimize from what I remember, yeah, which is just generally better. Five mana is a lot, even at in instant speed. I do like that it's going to work really well with our commander because we sacrifice a trigger, get a cleric, and then get two more clerics from our graveyard onto the one that we sacrificed, and then uh, another creature into play. Like, that is really, really good. But that being said, um, five mana is still a lot, and it is dependent on our commander working. So what is this? This card is dependent on, first, we need to have clerics in play, then we need clerics in the graveyard, and then we need an additional cleric in the graveyard for it to work with our commander. Like, that's kind of the definition of win more. Like, this is good and neutral as well, at least, so I do like this. And then it's five mana, and you still lose the creature if it's countered. I feel like this is just a little too much. It's just a little few too many hoops to jump through. So I, I don't like it very, very much. Life Insurance, likewise, is a card that I've tried quite a bit, and I really don't like it. I've played it in both Aristocrat decks and uh, Treasure-style decks, and, and uh, a deck that was a combination of the two, and I'm just generally not impressed by it. It's really, really slow. The Extort really doesn't come up. Um, I feel like if this card was... Because you can get this card basically... Ma uh, is it Mada or something like that? There's a Rakdos 3-mana creature that has this ability. So to have this on 5-mana feels a bit like you're overpaying for it, which is, of course, funny with the concept of the card, but I, I think it's clunky. I don't think it's terrible. I think you can get a lot of success with it, but I do think it's clunky, and at least it, it's at least a dollar, right? You might It might be cutting into your budget a little more than expected. Um, let me see. Now, I don't know if the budget is has to be under $100 or you're willing to only have the deck for $100. Packet of the Serpent eats into a lot of that budget at $7 minimum. So that is something worth considering that it might be a cut for budget. Deadly Dispute as well. I feel like if you need to cut for budget, I would start with Dispute. $4 for this card is too much. It is a good card. It's a very good card. But when you consider that this is... If we think on average every card in a $100 deck in Commander is a dollar, $4 for this card is a lot. It's not that good. It shouldn't carry this much. At least Pact of the Serpent is very, very good, so I'm okay with that. But Deadly Dispute is a bit much for that budget. Looking through quickly, I'm just looking for anything that jumps out in budget as well. A Fallen Ideal, I thought this was over here. I don't understand why this, every time I do this, yeah, every time I click the cards, it kind of forgets where the whole thing is. It's very confusing, but Fallen Ideal, I think is also a bit clunky. I get that it's a uh, sacrifice outlet. I'm gonna offer some other ones. The fact this needs a creature in play for this to be out is kind of clunky, even if it comes back if the creature dies. Uh, I don't really love it. It's just a lot of mana, and we're just going to have better solutions than this. Let's see. Let's take a look at... Spawning Bit as well feels a little clunky. I think... I do understand that this has a very, very high ceiling, but the floor is pretty bad, and I'm thinking mainly on the budget. This is a $3 card. For an ability that's just kind of okay, it doesn't, notably it doesn't even work with life insurance because it's tokens, but um, I don't know. I think, I think, okay, so basically my idea is this. When we are building aristocrats, and uh, once again, I, I feel like I'm going to promise this a lot, I am working on a like big video on aristocrats, but we have three pieces, right? We have the sacrifice outlet, we have the blood artist effect, and then we, or, or the payoff, if you may, and then we have the fodder. Spawning Pit is nice because it is both the sacrifice effect and the fodder, but it is overcosted for the sacrifice effect. Um, 
and then the fodder is not the part of the deck we have a problem with. Our commander provides the fodder. We have quite a bit of uh, fodder in all of our creatures to consume really easily. So this is just a two mana sacrifice outlet, and at $3, I don't think this is worth it. If you can keep it in budget, I think it is good. That's the only thing I'm harping on, but if you can't, um, I, would, I would probably cut it. Looking at our creatures, um, Sister Hospitalier is really, really good here. I, I didn't know, I don't know these 40k cards, and um, I do like the fascist nuns. Uh, I think they're cool, but that being said, uh, this is a pretty good card, and I do like that it's like a reverse uh, reanimate. Okay, moving on, let's see anything that... Micaeus is obviously, I think, quite expensive for the deck, but that being said, it is very, very, very strong in theory, right? It says non-humans, and I would be... Let's see, let's see if we can see how many of our creatures are humans. Let's group by... Sort by creature type? Isn't there a way? Subtype. So let's go to humans. We have 13 humans. That's not so bad. I wish it was a bit lower, but um, it's not the worst. So I think, and I might cut one or two of these, so maybe it's not the worst. Let's go back in here. Let's take a look at some of those humans, see what we can cut. Sin Collector is a little too um, narrow. I do really like it, uh, but it is just narrow. Even what with reanimating it over and over again, I don't love it. Uh, I think something like, where's our other three mana? Demon's Disciple is just so much better as a human cleric with an ETB um, because it just hits so many things. Whereas, and we should actually talk about Playcrafter. I didn't note that down. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think Sin Collector is just too narrow. It only hits one opponent, so I don't particularly love it. Uh, likewise, I did peek Syndic of Th a Tithes, sorry, is a human cleric, but Extort's not really where you want to be, and it, he doesn't even have an ETB, so I don't particularly like him as fodder or a reanimation target from our commander, so feels a little weak, and I wouldn't mind cutting them. Uh, both of our one mana cards, I think we can do better. Benevolent Bodyguard isn't bad, but we'll take a look at the other ones in a second to see what we can replace with. And otherwise, the deck itself looks rather good. So I think those are generally my cuts. I think if I'm being really, really strict, uh, I feel like Revival Revenge is a little weak for what it does, and it's a dollar, so I think I would cut that. If you want the first half, you can just press uh, play un Unearth, which is just better in mana. And the second half, I think, is just so clunky um, that it's it's not bad as a, as a fun card to kind of drain one of your opponents to half health, but most of the time you're not going to want to do that. You're just playing Revival, which should be Unearth. Um, but the rest is good. All right, let's let's go into talking about the cards I want to add. First of all, let's take a look at our one mana. Let me just not lose this. Our one mana creatures. Archfiend's Vessel, I think, is the strongest one that we can add as a one mana creature because once it is reanimated by our commander, it becomes a 5-5 demon, and I think we're generally very, very happy with that. So I think it is a very, very good card. I now realize that's wax dripping off of his arms. He's got candles lit on his arms and they're dripping off and not just an incessant amount of gore. So that's, uh, I think that's better <laughs> than, than the other option, but uh, this guy is not long for the world anyways. Children of Corliss is uh, both a creature that sacrifices itself, but also a really, really good card. Uh, there's going to be some turns you can do some stupid stuff with it where you can, let's say you take 10 damage from an opponent, right? You, they go to their end step, you sacrifice Children of Corliss, you gain 10 health. Then you sacrifice a 2-mana Cleric and bring back Children of Corliss, uh, Corliss, and then you can sacrifice them again to gain another 10 health. Now this is not even including 
the fact that at the end of any of your chains, you get to sacrifice kill, uh, children of Corliss and gain uh, that amount of life. This is a very, very powerful card. If you use cards such as, and though I'm not suggesting them, Necropotence or uh, Greed, where you can buy yourself, pay a large amount of life, uh, Children of Corliss obviously gets better and better. Uh, you have to always remember this card, you want to sacrifice it multiple times in the same turn, which we can put you above, you know, get you from like 30 life to like 60 life really, really easily. Uh, Giver Runes is more expensive, so I just clicked it out of compulsion, so we'll skip that. Uh, Souls Attendant is more expensive than I thought, and Souls, uh, Soul Warden is a little better. I wouldn't mind a $1.50 card. This is just a very good cleric. You'd be happy just playing it. Just get it out there, and as long as it's around, you're just going to be gaining extra life, you know? You'll be pretty happy with this. This is just a nice little effect and a nice combo with a card such as Marauding Blight Priest. So you'll be gaining some life. Sorry, I keep missing wanting to talk about this. This is not a good card. Markov Purifier is a two. You have to pay two mana to draw a card. You can only draw the one card. It's only on your end step and you need to have gained life is far too many hoops to jump through. I think you can very easily cut this card. All right, let's go back to additions. Uh, Playcrafter. Playcrafter is gonna be one of many cards I'm gonna suggest that aren't clerics, but I think are worth playing. Playcrafter is just a really, really good card. And the fact that you can just play this out, sacrifice another cleric and start chaining off is really attractive to me. But otherwise, um, in cards like this, you want a creature that is both a sack outlet uh, or maybe like a sack outlet, but a sacrifice that also impacts the board and play crafter making all your opponents sacrifice is rather strong. And if you use another reanimation spell on it, you're generally going to be happy. Don't get me wrong. If you have the choice, obviously demons disciple is better, but I think you're never going to be too sad, uh, having play crafter enter the battlefield. All right, let's start with looking at, uh, the, the aristocrats package for aura i just like to increase its power a little bit because what i'm feeling is to kind of address what our deck builder said um so the thing is is if we're going into a fair cleric deck we're gonna have a bad time there's just so many cards that uh of clerics that don't work well together or have limits to how good they can be like priest of the ancient lore is always good but something like uh, Lenin, uh, Leonin and Relic Warder is only sometimes good. If we kind of get the wrong halves of our deck of just creating a large clerical um, board, we're not going to have a really good time. So I'd like some cards that we can just fall back on and in the Aristocrat plan we're going to play some of the classic cards to kind of have a nice backbone to support ourselves as we build our cleric plan. Viscera Seer is just and, and Carrion Feeder are both just really, really good sack outlets in any Aristocrats deck. They come out for one mana, they have, uh, just like something like Spawning Pick Pit, they have a free sacrifice outlet, but they're also creatures, which means they can be reanimated, they can be put back in your hand with Dust to Dawn, and they can attack. Uh, Carrion Feeder especially is a very big beater, and Viscera Seers, uh, Viscera Seers, <laughs> <laughs> ability to scry is really really good you're just going to be very happy with them then i would just like uh, a few more of our like our blood artist effects i notice in the side here we have sanguary priest i think this should be in the main deck uh, because it it triggers a lot and it can be used to ping down creatures but i think we'd also want the classic cards of blood artist uh, Cruel Celebrant, Zillaport Cutthroat, Bastion of Remembrance, and Vindictive Vampire. Now, obviously, the weakest here is Blood Artist, even though uh, they continue to be the namesake of the ability for me. But the rest of them are really, really good. Let's just use Cruel Celebrant as our main example. Cruel Celebrant and all of the others work really well that every single time a creature is sacrificed, 
uh, or dies on your side of the field, you're going to drain each of your opponents for one life. And when we have multiple of these abilities, like Zulaport Cutthroat and Bastion of Remembrance, that's going to multiply really, really quickly, right? If we think in the way that you have a four-drop cleric you're ready to sacrifice, and you have three of these Blood Artist effects, well, that first sacrifice will drain three from each opponent. That's nine damage. Then you're going to get a three-mana creature from your graveyard, put it into play. Sacrifice that creature. That's another nine damage. Go to two. Another nine damage. Go to one. Another nine damage. And that's only if you want to go through the entire cycle at the time. But that four-mana creature represents... My goodness, math. Uh, 40... 45? No. How does math work? Yeah, 45 damage, right? 36, yeah, 45 damage across the board. Now, that realistically is um, 12 damage to each player. How does that math add up? <laughs> that is 36. Did I do my math wrong? Don't listen to me for math. I'm not here for math. But it is quite a bit of damage that you can get really, really easily at any time. And that's really, really powerful. It helps you kind of make your attacks matter more because you have such a large swath of damage that you can do. And I did check all of these cards are cheap and or can be found under a dollar, uh, which is where decks like these want to be. I don't know why the list one is so much more expensive. There must be something I'm missing here. But War of the Spark uh, version is like 70 cents. Blood Artist is the most expensive one, uh, but also the one that you can just not play. So don't feel like you have to grab that one. A cleric that I saw offhand that I thought works with the strategy of sacrificing is Ministrant of Obligation, uh, just because it leaves two 1 1 flying spirits, which are great attackers. And sorry, they're white and black spirits too. Interesting. But um, you'll be just very, very happy with these spirits. They're really fun to sacrifice. They do damage really easily through uh, combat with the evasion. And uh, if you if you set up the chain, you know, you sacrifice the uh, Ministrant of Obligations, and then, you know, later down uh, in the game, you, you play uh, a four drop in sacrificing it, getting the Ministrant back, and then sacrificing it again. Like, it's just really, really good. I do really like it. You're going to get a lot of success with these cards. Uh, I then did want to add, I think, two more draw spells to the deck. Phyrexian Arena, which we're getting to, we can hopefully get at that uh, a dollar price. Why the one you can't read is at a dollar, I'm not quite sure, but if you can get it around a dollar, that's really good. Alternatively, or additionally, very cheaply, Underworld Connections is always a card that we're very, very happy to have, and so you can grab it there. Finally, the last card I want to suggest is Buried Alive. Now, this card is definitely above your budget. Uh, if you can't get it for, uh, these are proxies, so, it's going to be like five or six dollars, which puts it in the in the range of where are you our uh, pact of the serpent. Right. And something to consider, though, is this is the kind of card that really, really gets your deck working. And there's a few other options that we can do. We can look at some self mill. We can play vile and tumor, which you are not playing because it's a warlock. Um, I thought it was a cleric for a second or unmarked grave is also an option, which I think is much cheaper. And the main purpose of this is to put the cards into your graveyard, so as you sacrifice your clerics, you'll be able to pull them out. But Buried Alive is the best version, right? Because what you can do is turn three, play, like if you have a sack outlet, let's say, turn three, uh, you play Buried Alive, and you put a three mana cleric, a two mana cleric, and a one mana cleric onto the battlefield. The, when you hit four mana, you play your commander. Now, as long as you have that sack outlet, uh, you have the ability at any point, should something happen, you can sacrifice your commander. Uh, I guess that, yeah, you'll at least get a three mana creature, so that's protection. But if you happen to then play another greater uh, mana cost creature at any time, you can go down the chain as long as your commander's out. And Buried Alive has basically tutored your best clerics for the situation into your graveyard for this to go out. I think this card is really, really strong and you're gonna be really happy with the results. So I do heavily recommend it for sure. 
Okay, I think I think that's generally it. Uh, I do like this deck. I don't with the extra card draw and having a bit more of um, aristocrat's spine to work with. I think you're gonna find a lot more success with it. I think Aura is very good. Uh, I think Cleric Tribal also is very very good, but it's a it's a tricky tribe to play. And I really do like how Aura kind of messes with the math by making your deck into kind of a reverse uh, birthing pod situation. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, I think I think if you kind of lean too hard on the cleric strategy, I do get how uh, it can be a little tricky to kind of get the deck going. But I think especially with the little extra draw, and if you could get buried alive, I think you're gonna get a lot of success with it and the deck will be stronger for sure. I hope this video was helpful uh, to you. Thank you so much, Dully, for sending your deck. I do love Black White Aristocrats and I really like the deck and I think uh, with a $100 budget, this deck is feasible to being very, very strong for that budget. Uh, if you'd like to send me another draft or you know more specific things you wanna work on, or if anyone would like to send me any deck, there is a link in the video description below uh, for the form you can fill out. And if you'd like your deck to be the next one I look at, there's a link for that as well. Finally, if you could like, comment, subscribe, do the whole YouTube thing, I'd be very grateful. As always, the channel is growing and all your support is very much so appreciated. Thank you so much, Dolly, and good luck working on the deck.